Today I'm going to show you how I turned a design that's been floating around in my head into a tangible DIY storage cabinet using lumber from my local home improvement store. So let's get started. This project is sponsored by my friends at Dat Products. As many of you may know, I am a full-blown weekend warrior. I do have a full-time job during the week, but on the weekends, I love to spend my time building. And for the past few weekends, I have been working super hard on a DIY storage cabinet for my parents' laundry room. Now, unfortunately, my local lumber yard is actually not that local, and I have to rely on my local home improvement store for a lot of the lumber that I choose for my projects. So for this project specifically, I did challenge myself to use only lumber from my local home improvement store. And that included the use of select pine as well as birch plywood and some poplar for the countertop. But as always, you can find a full list of the materials and supplies that I used on this specific build on my website by clicking on the link below this video. And I have also published some printable plans for this build as well. Now to get started, I began by cutting all of the pieces for my cabinet frame. And those were all cut from two by two select pine boards. And since there were a lot of pieces to keep track of, one of the first things I did after cutting all the pieces was label them so that I didn't lose track of what piece went where. It is honestly so embarrassing how many times I have glued the wrong parts together because I didn't label them. So now I just label everything. Disclaimer here is that there are a lot of pieces in this build, so I am really sorry in advance if I lose you. I promise I'm gonna try my best, but essentially I had to label some leg pieces as well as some long stretchers, some frame pieces, shelf pieces, and support pieces. And if I had a dollar for every time I just said pieces in that sentence, I would be rich. Once all the pieces were labeled, I pretty much drilled pocket holes into every single frame piece minus the legs. And if you don't have a pocket hole jig, there are some other options for attaching the pieces. And I did use a mix of all of these options in this build to show you what your options are if you wanna do something similar. But essentially once those holes were drilled, it was time to start working on the side panels for the cabinet first. And before I attached anything, I actually decided to make a lot of spacers for this project to make sure that everything was spaced out completely evenly and kept pretty square. And once I was happy with the placement of all of my lumber, I then used wood glue and pocket hole screws to attach them together. And overall, I just really love the look of having this shelf float about two inches off of the floor. But if you're building a cabinet like this one, you can choose to put this shelf wherever you'd like. And as you can see, just one quick tip, as I was attaching all of the pieces, I also kept a speed square nearby to make sure that everything was nice and square because making a cabinet means that it has to be perfect or putting the doors on later is going to be the worst day of your life. But anyway, once I was done attaching the bottom piece for that shelf on the bottom of the cabinet, I then began to attach some of the other pieces for the side panels using wood glue and pocket hole screws the same way as I did on the bottom piece. I then repeated these steps on an identical second side panel before moving on to the next step. Once the bottom portion of those side frames were done, it was time to measure and cut the panels that were going to go in between all of the two by two pieces. And you guys, I'm not gonna lie, every time I have to cut plywood in my shop, it is a flipping chore. You need a bigger shop. It is seriously so small in there. But anyway, I basically dragged the table saw out from the corner of the shop and began to cut my three quarter inch plywood into the size that I needed for my side panels and then brought those panels over to my pocket hole jig and drilled pocket holes into each one of them. I then brought them back over to the side frames that I built, propped them up using a spacer, and then attached them to the frames using wood glue and pocket hole screws. And I installed them inset like this, not only for decorative purposes, but for practical purposes as well, because it's going to be so much easier to install my cabinet hinges later when there is a solid flush surface to work with. But once I was done installing those panels, it was then time to install that top two by two piece that I left out earlier. And I did this using wood glue and pocket hole screws. And now my side panels are done. After completing those side panels, it was time to start attaching them by using all of those long pieces that I cut earlier in the process. And this is the part of the process that I really started to love, and not only because I had the puppies in the shop with me at this point, which was a really awesome distraction, but also because this is the part of the process where I really started to see the cabinet come together and I started to get super excited about this build. And essentially, I just attached those side panels together by using really long stretcher pieces and attaching those to the panels with wood glue and pocket hole screws the same exact way that I assembled everything to begin with. Now one little word of advice with pocket hole screws, whenever I'm using them I do like to try to hide them and that means by putting them in places that are not going to be seen when you're staring at the cabinet head on or from the side. So a lot of the times I do hide the pocket holes on the underside of pieces or if they're on the top of the piece I will hide 
hide them on top. That way I can install the countertop over those openings and you won't even know that they exist. And as for the ones in the plywood, I am going to be filling these in later. I did decide at this point that I did want to paint this cabinet. So I do have a fun trick for that and I'll show you that a little later in the video. Once the bulk of the cabinet build was done, I decided that I wanted to add a center divider to help split up the cabinet doors a little bit and to make two compartments in the cabinet instead of one big one. And I started this process by adding two two by two support pieces, one in the front and one in the back directly centered on this cabinet. And I attached them to the cabinet using wood glue and some screws that I had countersunk through the frames. And if you don't have a pocket hole jig, this is another option for attaching all of these two by two pieces together. You can do this and then fill the holes with wood putty or wood dowels later in the process. Next, it was time to prep the main bottom shelf of the cabinet for install. And I started by using some scrap three quarter inch plywood as spacers. And I attached those spacers to the bottom frame pieces of the cabinet using wood glue and pocket hole screws. And doing this not only allows me to just drop the panel into the opening and allow it to float flush with the cabinet, but also gives that bottom panel some extra support as well. And once I perform my ritualistic happy dance because the panel miraculously fit into the opening perfectly, I then attached it to those supports using wood glue and brad nails. Next, it was time to install the two center panels and I did that the same exact way that I installed the panels for the side frames. It was really important that I made sure that these panels were flush with the frame pieces as well because it's just going to make installing those cabinet hinges a million times easier later in the process. Now the last step in the two by two process of this cabinet build was to install the shelf slats on the bottom and I just used whatever left over what I had which turned out to be 11 separate pieces. I spaced them out evenly and then attached them using wood glue and brad nails. I then covered all of those holes from the brad nails using wood putty and allowed that to dry overnight. I did the same thing for all of the openings for the pocket hole screws as well. I just used wood putty to fill in all of those gaps. And the really cool part about Daps wood putty specifically is that it goes on pink and then turns beige once it's dry. So once it was dry, I took my sander to it to make it look nice and neat. And since I was already playing around with wood putty, I also decided to cut two shelves for the inside of the cabinet and use the wood putty to hide all of the exposed plywood grain. I used to use edge banding for this, but since I will be painting the cabinet, I did learn the hard way to not use edge banding with paint because it causes it to bubble. So I decided to try the wood putty method and it worked out really beautifully once I sanded everything down flat. Now at this point, the bulk of the cabinet is built and it was time to do the most intimidating part in my book, which was to make the cabinet doors. For this part of the process, I chose some one by three boards that were select pine from my local home improvement store and used my miter saw to cut them into styles and rails for my cabinet doors. I made sure to cut them longer than I actually needed to because I am gonna end up trimming these cabinets down to their perfect size once it's time to install them. Next, I found the center of every single board and then brought them over to my table saw to rip grooves into the boards to hold the plywood panels for the cabinet doors. And when doing this, I had to be careful to make sure that these grooves stayed completely center in the board, but also make sure that they were wide enough to fit a plywood panel later in the process. Now, last time I built cabinet doors on my channel, I showed you guys a trick where you essentially just rip grooves into every single piece and then use wood putty to hide those exposed grooves. And you can check that out on my live edge cabinet build. But this time around, I really wanted to challenge myself to do a tongue and groove door. I've never done that before and it was actually easier than I thought it would be. Essentially, I raised my blade to the amount that I needed in order to take off enough material for my small rail board to be cut into a tongue that would fit inside of the groove. And I did this by flipping the piece over a couple of times and figuring out the perfect dimensions on a practice piece before moving on to my final pieces. I hadn't quite figured out exactly how to figure out the thickness of my tongue for the tongue and groove joinery right away. So I did have to just dial it in on a practice piece, but there are some really awesome videos on YouTube telling you how to do these things. And I've watched them a million times, but ultimately my friend Jason Bent from Bent's Woodworking has an awesome, awesome video. And I have linked to it below this video in case you wanna check it out for yourself. Now, the coolest part I think about this form of making a cabinet door is that it requires absolutely no hardware. It's just joinery and glue. So once I was done cutting all of the pieces, it was then time to prepare for the glue up. 
But before I could get too excited and do that, I did have to cut some quarter inch plywood at the table saw to make the panels for the cabinet doors. And following that, I was then able to glue everything up nice and neat and make four cabinet doors for my cabinet. Also, sorry for the terrible camera angle here. I just get so nervous when I'm doing the glue up because once you do this, you really can't go back in time. So I wasn't really paying attention to where the camera was pointing. I was mostly just paying attention to the glue up. One other thing that I forgot to mention is I checked square when I was putting the cabinet together this was really important because if the cabinet doors are not square they're not going to be installed properly later while the doors dried i decided to be productive and i used my shelf pin jig to drill adjustable shelf pin holes into my cabinet and these are what is going to hold up those shelves for the inside of this unit and after drilling those holes and giving the piece a really nice final sanding it was then time to paint the cabinet oh my god this color is so nice I've been experimenting with different wood finishes for my furniture pieces lately and I decided to try this cabinet enamel but I didn't really love it. I think it's because again I didn't use primer I really just need to suck it up and start using primer but it didn't really dry the way that I wanted it to and it made photographing the piece later really difficult but overall it had really nice coverage and was easy to apply and it took about three coats with me sanding at 320 grit in between each coat. Full blown honesty though, I think I am gonna go back to using latex paint next time I do wanna paint a piece of furniture because that worked out really, really well on my Live Edge cabinet build. Now as the cabinet dried, it was time to start working on the countertop portion of the build and I decided to use poplar for this because I really just love poplar. I think it's gorgeous. And I cut my poplar pieces into three separate strips and then wanted to laminate them together into one solid countertop. And we all know that age old saying, you can never have enough clamps and that is legitimately true. So I removed all of the cabinet doors from my clamps and then replaced those cabinet doors with my poplar boards, which I glued up using the same glue that I used for the entire project and my clamps. While I let that countertop cure, it was time to install all of the cabinet doors and I did this by trimming them down to their size and then placing them in an order that I felt happy with. I then labeled all of these cabinet doors, brought them over to my workbench and then drilled openings for all of the hinges to go into using a concealed hinge jig. I actually use this jig a lot for cabinet doors. It makes installing the hinges pretty much foolproof because it's already calibrated and everything is where it needs to be. So this thing really saved my life on this build. I then sanded and painted the doors and let those sit aside to dry. And while I did that, I then went back to that countertop and began to work on prepping it for the top of the cabinet. I was actually really excited about how these panels glued up because they looked awesome and I basically just brought them over to my table saw and my miter saw, cut them down to the size that I wanted the panel to be and then began to finish it using sanding and then a pre-conditioner for the wood before staining it. One bit of advice when working with poplar is that it can stain pretty blotchy if you don't prep it the right way and using a wood conditioner is the best way to avoid any of that blotchiness. This is a trick that I used on my sliding barn door project as well and it turned out beautiful and this one turned up beautiful too. Now as that dried I went back to the cabinet doors and began to install all of the hinges into the openings that I created with the cabinet jig and then I installed the cabinet doors to the cabinet using a little trick that I've seen my buddy Brad from Fix This Build That use a couple of times where he uses a deck of playing cards to make sure that all of the spacing on the cabinet doors is completely even. He adds and removes cards as needed and then once the spacing is on point it's officially time to install the cabinet doors. One thing that I did have to add to the cabinet doors was a little block that basically stopped the doors from going in too far. I don't know why this was happening, but just adding this little stop seemed to work really well and I just painted it later to match the cabinet. I then installed the shelves using the adjustable shelf pins and once that was ready, it was time to install the finished countertop as well. One method I've used a couple of times to install countertops to my cabinets is the brad nail method. And I basically just nail the countertop into the cabinet and then fill those holes using a wood putty. Dap just came out with this premium wood filler, which you can tint to match the stain that you have on your finished piece. And I was really excited to try it out and that is exactly what I did. And honestly, I was really surprised by how well it matched the color of the poplar as well as the stain that I chose. Next, I installed a pre-painted quarter inch panel of plywood to the back of the cabinet using brad nails. Don't worry, I painted the back of that thing later. It was bothering me so, so much. But anyway, once I was done installing that, it was then time to install all of my cabinet hardware, which included basically just the knobs. 
I've decided to go with something super simple here, pre-drilled some holes, installed the knobs following the instructions that came in the package, and bing, bang, boom, we were done. There honestly are few things that are more exciting in life for me than watching something that was an idea in my brain turn into a tangible, real-life piece of furniture in my living space. With every new build comes new opportunities to try new techniques, and I am so excited about the new techniques that I tried on this build. Minus not really being super stoked on the finishing, I'm pretty proud of this build and I actually really love it a lot. I can't wait to show you guys where this is going to go, how it's going to be used. That's going to be for a video in the future. But until then, I do hope that you will stick around for more projects in the very near future. And as always, thank you so much for giving me a platform to share all of the ideas that are in my brain and to make them a tangible project with you all by my side. Until next time, friends, happy DIYing.